My lesson scripture text today is from Psalm 139, the first 18 verses. O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest when I sit down and when I rise up. Thou discernest my thoughts from afar. Thou searchest out my path and my lying down, and art acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, lo, O Lord, thou knowest it altogether. Thou dost beset me behind and before, and layest thy hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. Whither shall I go from thy spirit, or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend to heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in Sheol, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there thy hand shall lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, let only darkness cover me, and the light about me be night, even the darkness is not dark to thee. The night is bright as the day, for darkness is as light with thee. For thou didst form my inward parts, thou didst knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise thee, for thou art fearful and wonderful, Wonderful are thy works. Thou knowest me right well. My frame was not hidden from thee when I was being made in secret, intricately wrought in the depths of the earth. Thy eyes beheld my unformed substance. In thy book were written, every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when as yet there was none of them. How precious to me are thy thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! If I would count them, they are more than the sand. When I wake, I am still with thee. I want to thank Ginny and the boards of our church for guiding us through this time of transition. I pray that all of us are going to be and are supportive of this process. About Friday a week ago, I was over in uh, advance and went to Wendy's got a bowl of chili and a drink. And when I finished eating that, I filled up the cup, went out to my car, and uh, put my wallet and phone and glasses case in my car, and set the glass, the cup, on the roof of the car, and got in, and you can see what's coming. <laughs> and I drove out and went up to the wait for the red light, a little ways away, it was a hot day, I had the window open, and suddenly a woman ran up to me and said, Sir, I'm not trying to scare you, but here's your drink. <laughs> I didn't even have time to give her a tip. Now, I've heard of room service, but this was roof service. Anyway, about 200 years ago or so, there was a group of thinkers called the Deists, and they came up with at least one concept that I kind of remember, and that was the belief that God created things and sort of wound it up like you'd wind up a clock and set it in motion and then sort of sat back, kind of hands off. That's quite a bit different from what we know in our heritage in the Christian faith. Sometime around 4,000 years ago or so, God called a man named Abram up in Haran, way north of Israel, and said, go to a land that I will show you, the land of Canaan. So we went. We don't know how he knew to do this, but somehow he received that request to go do that. A little later, Three men came to Abraham and Sarah, his wife, and said, you're going to have a child, even in your old age. And there, these three men were maybe angels or messengers of some sort. And shortly after that, Hagar was sent out into the wilderness by Sarah because she didn't like her having the child, Ishmael. But an angel came to Hagar and told her to go back and saved her life. Jacob was a man who um, 
went back to Haran to find a wife. And on the way back, he slept on a rock. And while he was sleeping, he had a dream of angels going up and down a ladder to heaven. And when he woke, he said, surely this is the house of God, which is the meaning of Beth, house, and El, Bethel, house of God. A little later, when he was going to be reconciled with his brother Esau, he wrestled all night with some kind of divine figure. And he would not give up in the wrestling match until this figure would bless him. And the figure did bless him and touched his hip and wounded him so that he went limping away. But he changed his name to Israel. Joseph had some kind of divine power given to him by God to interpret dreams. And those dreams helped him be saved when he was put in prison in Egypt. And later, he was reconciled to his brothers. Moses was tending him some sheep in the wilderness, saw a burning bush, went up to it, and wondered what this was. And there, God said, I am Yahweh, which means I am who I am, or I do what I want to do. And so he had this request to go down to Pharaoh in Egypt and let my people go. And he went. And so this divine contact is being made to various people long ago. Dreams, messengers or angels, visions, a burning bush, various things. Even Samuel as a child in the temple heard a voice calling him. And this was the beginning of a series of prophets who somehow got the word of the Lord and proclaimed it to the people to remind them to worship God alone, to trust and obey God, for there's no other way, as the hymn puts it. And so we have these revelations, you could say, words of visions of inspiration to various people over time, communicating to them that what they're supposed to do, how they're supposed to live. When the temple was built in Solomon's time, around 900 BC, a number of people, we could call them poets, created what we call the prayers that are in the Book of Psalms. You may be familiar with most of them, prayers of praise and adoration, prayers for the anointing of the king, prayers of repentance by David, prayers of comfort, like the 23rd Psalm. And then we come upon this particular psalm that I'm talking about today, Psalm 139. It's a psalm about our intimate God. Quite a change from what we've known so far to what he now says about God. He uses, and I use the word intimate, and we know what intimate means. You could have intimate knowledge of some subject, yes. You could feel intimate with your pet. But mostly we think of intimacy in terms of a relationship among people or between two people. We've all had boyfriends or girlfriends in high school or college, and maybe later we got married. And in, in that relationship, we had a sense of trust. We had a sense of wanting to know who this other person is. And sometimes in those relationships, we feel a little vulnerable. Maybe we don't want to say some things about ourselves. But that what we do share these things, we're close to one another. And it's this closeness that describes the word intimacy. The implications of this knowledge God has of us means I better be careful about what I say. For he opens up by saying, O oh Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. And then he tells about this God who is so intimate that he knows when he goes to bed, he knows when he's getting up, he knows what he's thinking, and before he thinks and says something, God knows what he's going to say. 
which means we need to be careful about what we say. And there are other texts in the Bible that say, set a watch over my lips, O Lord. Or the letter of James says, the tongue is such a dangerous thing, it can create a forest fire, which we're familiar with, of course, today. It can be a blessing, or it can be a harmful thing, the way we use our tongues. The Lord knows what we're thinking and what we're saying. The second part of the psalm is about how people try to hide from God. We know about Adam and Eve who disobeyed God and then tried to hide in the garden. And God came after them and said, where are you? What are you doing? What have you done? And they had to admit, as lots of people today, particularly political leaders or Hollywood type people or famous people, live by deception. They try to hide the sexual abuse. They try to hide the lies that they speak. They try to hide and deceive people. Lots of that's going on with scams that you're aware of. People are trying to hide and it's in the darkness that most of these crimes take place. Drug dealings, robberies, brutalities, all sorts of things. And yet the psalmist says, I can't hide from this God. God knows where I am. And I could go far away to some island somewhere and feel like I'm safe. But God is there with me. There's no place I can go to heaven or to Sheol, to the furthest marsh parts of the earth. And so I say it's better for us to confess our deceits, our lies, our dishonesty. It's better that we take that burden off of ourselves and get rid of that guilt that we may feel about what we've done wrong and confess it to the Lord. And what happens? We find relief. We find forgiveness. We find the grace of God who comes after us and loves us and forgives us. Confession is good for the soul. So the psalmist is saying, God knows me completely, and God is everywhere, day and night, here and there. The darkness is as light, which reminds us of what John said about Jesus. The darkness cannot cover the light, the light of God's love in Jesus for us. The third message in this psalm has to do with the fact that God formed him and knit him together in his mother's womb. I suppose this man saw pregnant women around him and saw them give birth. And his explanation for this is that God formed him himself. He knit me together in my mother's womb in the intricate parts of the earth down deep. That's where I came from. And I declare that God has made me. Not only has God made me, but he has numbered my days. He's written them in a book and knows how long I'll be here. So, God is saying, he knows all about us. There's one other thing he says that he didn't get to, and that is, namely that God had us in mind from the beginning of time. We have to go to Paul to read that in Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. He destined us in love to be his children through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will. Aren't you glad that the psalmist long ago found out how intimate God is with each one of us? And because God is intimate with me, he's also intimate with you, which means I need to respect you, honor you, and know that you too are a child of God. For God is present not only with me, but with you no matter where you go. 
So he is saying, he is saying, God is saying, I know who you are, and I know what you're doing, and I know what you're thinking, and I know where you are, and I know where you came from, and I know how long you're going to be here, and I know where you're going. Will you say after me this little phrase at the end of the text, when I awake, I am still with thee. When I awake, I am still with thee. Once more, when I awake, I am still with thee. Let us pray. O oh God, forgive us when we harbor ungodly thoughts or plan to get even with those who hurt us or think we can run away from you. Renew a right and sacred spirit within us so that we trust in you to provide what you know we need, healing, patient trust, intercessions for those who are grieving, stubborn, and hurting. We ask you to help us and them to know what that psalmist knew long ago, that you are a God who never forsakes us, but embraces us with redemptive grace. Amen.